all you people out there listening to the show, episode 680. Whoa. 680, uh, Susie Master. <laughs> yeah, we're, the, we're the morning zoo, Sarah and Susie. I really do think that we missed our calling in being like morning radio. For oh, sure. We were We would have been oh, mm-hmm. so good. I mean, we're podcast hosts two days a week, which is like, you know, there's three days shy of being a morning radio <laughs> show right (laughs) right Right. 40 percent way there yeah basically yeah but that could be our full fallback you know yeah foot remember when i went on a date with that guy from the radio and i here's the thing i listened to him (gasps) station we didn't really talk about this a lot but i listened to his show and i was like i'm better than that (laughs) our show's better i blocked that out yeah that was something. I mean, we couldn't talk. We still can't talk about the details of that whole date or whatever. But I'm just glad things worked out the way they did. Let me put it that way. Yeah, me too. I mean, people were funny. really rooting for that, though. I know. Because he, he was, I don't know, well-known or something. Rude with capital R. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Actually, for sure. Yeah. you got to stand up when you meet somebody for the first time. It's pretty basic. Well, let's start there. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, here we go. So, but I just was wanted to say, like, if, you know, we were doing a morning show, we'd do one better than that at the end. Yeah, we would. We'd, we, that can, that'll be our fallback. Okay. Okay, couple orders of business. Number one, are you a patron? Because you should be. Yeah, definitely. Slash brain candy. It's getting wacky over there because I feel like we stopped caring, like, at some point about what, what people think. No, 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 about what people think of us, not about, like, oh. Our patrons. Oh, I was like, what? I care the most. I, I stopped caring. Yeah, Suze. I am creeping up on the fucking 40s. I'm, I, we'll call it like an early. I'm having yeah. early. I, I'm an early bloomer. IDGAF is the vibe. Like, Totes. I do not care. And so things are getting silly. I Every time I'm like, I shouldn't have said that. And I always think like, should I post this video? And then I'm like, oh, I don't care. Definitely. Here's what we need to do more of. Caring less. Yeah. Or here's what we need to do less of, Karen? <laughs> yeah. What are we going either way? Both, Both of those things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because like, like if you know, you know. And if you don't know, I don't need to explain it. What is the thing like uh, Dr. Seuss is like problematic, but uh, there's something you said about like people who don't matter – don't yes something like that about like who care don't matter don't matter don't care and something like that i don't know it's something care. like yes. that yes but it's a great one and we should probably feel like that and like anybody who's like team brainiac they get it they're like they get it and if you want to get it you should join patreon.com slash brain candy and also check out our merch because sarah designed some amazing apartment pants and <gasps> i love those they're so comfy here's my my mom stole mine oh that makes sense they do feel very peg well so they they're fun. You know, well, she was in the hospital and stuff. I have an extra. Well, I mean, I bought more, but I was just like, this is a testimonial because she, I loaned her a pair when she was in the hospital because she didn't want to be like nude under that robe that they give you. Right. And um, she was like, this is what I want for Christmas. I want two pairs. So I had oh. to order more. Like she's obsessed with well, them. Well, they're she very they're soft. Best. Yeah. And I told her they run small. Yeah. So size up. Go, I mean, she's 106 pounds and she got a medium. So okay. Size definitely boy size up. up. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah, check out our merch. Okay. So we also need to talk about how we were debunked. Well, I debunked <gasps> us. This, I went on Snopes because I was convinced that that lottery toilet poop thing was false and it oh, was. It was. Well. It was too good to be true. <laughs> it was. I know. You know what? Uh, it's what we all wanted. It's what we wanted. So we had wishful thinking, you know. This is why sometimes the internet, boo, <laughs> boo, boo. Remember yeah. times before the internet when you could just say things like, "If you put Coca Cola in Ment- Mentos and Coca Cola, it you will explode." Yeah, and people just and took nobody your could word say for otherwise. It. Nobody could say boo. Yeah. Now I'm saying yeah. to the internet. Now we say boo. Because it ruins everything. Like, And I even said when I introduced the story, I'm like, this is so good that it has to be false. But 
I love how last episode was all about, here's why technology is amazing. AI is helping. (laughs) But and now we're like, internet, boo. Yeah, it let me down because I don't know which brainy sent that to me, but I was like, this is the best poo story of all time. Isn't it fair that we believe that because we got a little like warmed up and excited with the with the mad pooper, the pooper intendant? Yeah. That was right. a real story. Well, that's the thing. There's so many crazy poopers that it's it was crazy, but it could be true. Adam, or not Adam, uh, not Adam, uh, uh, Abram from our own show. Pooped in jail. Pooped in jail, smeared walls. it on the walls, went Picasso on us. With, People with do the weird number stuff two. with poop. So come on, this this is like, I know sounds we could have been could be real. So that hey, was I did debunked. win the lottery the other day, six dollars. How but, much? You know. No way. Yeah, I only played well, two dollars. What did you play? So what do you call them? Scratchers. Big ups. No, no, I did the um because the lottery is up to like one billion or whatever. I think the drawings tonight. So I entered in that, and then a while back when I first signed up for like the Lotto dot com or whatever because I played on the. They gifted me ten dollars. That's so nice of them. I know. So I used two dollars out of that ten, and I won six. I believe this is how they start a gambling addiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the now genesis. When I say this out loud. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> this is her origin story of addiction. <laughs> yeah. Then they're doing that thing that that the Vegas slot machines do, where they just keep you on the tee, where they're like, oh, oh here's a little win. Oh, totally. Oh, so I want to win. Here you go. And then it's hey. back to losing. As soon as I put my twenty dollars in there, I've put zero dollars in there. If you're put- in Vegas and you would like to know the secret to getting Sarah hooked on whatever, oh. just offer her a free buffet. Oh, I'm in. Oh my god, I am committed to <laughs> your establishment. If you give me, I, I, there's not much I will not do. With the offering of a free buffet. Yeah. So, like, you would think, well, sure, I'm losing all this money, but I am getting, you know, bottomless crab legs or whatever the yeah. heck it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, we God. had we have to retract that story on the lottery yeah. pooper. Oh. Then, Too did deep. you see the results of the poll regarding whether people would choose a silent <gasps> poo or a smellless? Oh, I didn't even vote. Gosh darn it. This is what happens when I have a busy work day. Ugh. That's the funniest part. Sarah really believes her vote counts, and she feels regrets. Well, you lost. What? what? Oh, it's odor. Not not yeah. sand. I think it was sixty okay. to sixty five percent. Doing it right now. What do you mean? I'm, I'm doing a poll on my page. All right. What? If You'll it comes get the same different? results. Don't lead the witness either. I've I seen won't. your polls. I won't. You'll be like, what? So, I'll, what do you guys I'll think? Say. Do you agree with me or that loser? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them which side you're on. I won't. I'll just black screen. What is the worst part? What is the most embarrassing part of making a BM? All right, that's fair. That's a different that's wording. Fair. That's fine. That's totally fair. We're good. With that. <laughs> BM okay. shame, smell, yeah. or yeah, uh, okay. sound. We'll see. We'll see. All yeah, right. we will, Sarah. So be sure yeah, to vote. I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I was wrong on something else we did recently. This is how it's, it's been going like this for a while. To be honest, I was like, you know what? Sarah's actually a winner here because I thought this was going to be 98% in my oh, favor. Oh. I but didn't even 60, think 60, 40? You, 65, oh. whatever. I'm okay with 35. that. I was just like, who? what are these people? What is the sound that their poos are making? Clearly, I did have. I, I have been eating on the more healthy vegetable-y side recently, and yeah. I've been eating a lot of Brussels sprouts and carciferous vegetables <laughs> are noisy. Not so much going in. Okay, Here's kind of what I digestion. wait. I've just come up with a theory. What? Oh, <gasps> you know how you have a Susie's got a theory. <laughs> You know how you have like a, a more substantial booty? Definitely. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think you're right with this. What do we say? That makes louder toots. Correct. Then. Yeah. Well, also, if the cheeks are touching, loud tooting. If yeah. Sometimes if I'm laying, like if I'm in certain positions laying down, silent. No problem. Right. Like, so maybe if we ask the people that chose for the silence, oh. if are you well endowed in your bum, are you I a- bet- 
they tend to be big buns. Big buns. Big buns, loud toots. Yeah, so Get they're more on, embarrassed by that. Pole. But I'm not creating any of that noise because I have wow. a very small tushy. But really? I but think what about so. when they're together? No sound? No, there no. can be a sound, but it's never like an it's embarrassing. Like, oh. <laughs> Tim would always talk about the 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 question poop. Uh-huh. Where it's like asking something. <laughs> it's funny. Ever listen? I think about this. I'm like, I am, like we're like I said, we're in the fucking forties almost. I I am I am 37 years old, give or take ish. ish. Um, <laughs> no, I'm 37. I will be 37 like two weeks. What else? Uh, and um, what the hell was I talking about before? Well, we this? were. <laughs> No, I Question everything. toots. Questions. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Uh, will, I'm like, will farts ever not be funny or will I ever not giggle or say, hey, hey nice at the number 69? Never. Okay. Never my yeah. whole life. Well, when, I when will I get too old for that? Because I thought it would happen by now. It hasn't. So what, 40, 45, 50? Am I going to all of a sudden think that that's not funny? No, I think you're mature... The maturation process is over. It's over. We. But cat. I never found them funny. So you and I are different that way. No, like talking about farts is funny. Okay, Please, funny. we Susie, we've literally made ourselves the number one podcast for number two stories. So how can you say you don't think this is funny when you bring most of this? The conversation to the table? is funny, not the act. This is true. So I don't like right. I want. I yeah. get genuinely yeah. mad. I know, but that's part of the hilarity. I was thinking actually about how um, on the challenge, I there have been a couple times when someone has farted in front of me and stuff, but knowing what I know now about how often you people do this, you fart, like oh. I'm surprised it wasn't nonstop. Mm. We lived with 32 people. Yeah, I mean, it was. in the like. What do you think? Everyone was holding it in? Yeah, you f- like find sneaky ways to do it. It's the same way. There's like, look at how many people are in a, mm, a grocery store, and you know it doesn't smell like farts everywhere. It's just like, I don't know, people are going there, but some people are doing it and just like not caring. I know, and I hate those people with all my heart. Yeah. But what I love is dad grass. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you, Suze, if you have a little more of that dad grass. Maybe you won't care anymore. There is something that it is ta- now officially time for. What? And that is to get Bo the dog CBD. I know that they have it from Dad Grass because we looked this up before. Dad Grass yeah, for dogs. Because it chills me out and why I think that my dog wouldn't need exact. You know how they say people and dogs are the same? So, like, I, I yeah. make sure I'm taking that every day now. Like, my little tint cure. Drop I'm sure if Love you it. gave her a little bit of yours, yeah, it would be just fine. Like, she needs the dog because she is getting doggy anxious. Oh, no. That's terrible. And she just like kind of paces and then stares off in weird places and then like can't stop licking her paws, which I feel is the dog version of biting your nails. And if if my anxiety, like I feel like it is, is you know, stress Whenever- goes down with my dad grass. So no more biting yeah. nails. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. And that is the thing about dad grass is that it is, it's the kind of high that people had in like the sixties and seventies where it was just enough to take the edge off. So if you were anxious, yeah, then you're going to just be like, Hey, mellow, everything's fine. Peace, yeah. love, dope, baby. Yeah. And nothing crazy where you're feeling like paranoid or you need like, right. A, no, a this is chips. not that. It won't. No. It, this is FDA approved in all fifty states. Mm-hmm. This is you can mail it, no problemo. This yeah, it is, comes right to your door. Yeah. Legal organic smokable hemp relaxes your body, mellows your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, one hundred percent organic pre rolled joints, tinctures, and gummies. Mm-hmm. Very very low in THC, yeah. mostly C- CBD. Yeah. And God, all CBD Dadgrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over and ship right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash brain candy. Go to dadgrass.com slash brain candy for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash brain candy. Yeah. Um, I order them, get 20% off. Yeah, right? Wink, wink. 
I won't tell. Okay, yeah, moving on. Gift of both. <clears throat> uh, okay, this is a documentary I watched, which you would never think probably to watch, and okay. that you would never think I would watch, but um, it was on Peacock, and okay. it is the documentary about Ric Flair, <gasps> the wrestler. Oh, yeah. okay. Woo! WWF and Didn't he that, do that other one. Yeah, woo! woo! That's what it's called. Woo! Oh God, that's the Ric Flair story, I think is what it's called. And um, holy heck, does this guy have a story to tell? Tell me. It's just one of those ones where you're just like, how did all this happen to one person? Yeah. Um, I was Agent in- of Chaos? <laughs> well, he definitely is. Yeah. Um, but he also has just had things sort of happen to him that just are remarkable. But it begins with um, the story of his adoption. He was adopted as a baby, but he was considered a black market baby. So he was stolen from an orphanage. What? And then some couple bought him. It was like something that happened back then. Oh my gosh. And he was adopted into a family where the dad is a medical doctor. The mom had a master's in English and theater. (laughs) And the dad also had a PhD in English and theater, Mm -hmm. in addition to being a medical doctor. And they got Ric Flair. Yeah. And he's like, who is not a medical doctor or a PhD. How many more times am I going to do that this episode? Here's the quote. That's terrible. He goes, I, I I came from this cultured couple, the nicest couple you'd ever want to meet. I Let didn't me inherit me. their 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 brains. I'm adopted. <laughs> 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 and um, he goes, they called me uh, somebody who's mine, uh, a daydreamer. Now they call it ADD. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. This is a guy who, he wasn't meant to be, you know, a a real bookworm or anything, um, and found his niche. He's an entertainer. He's just like all charisma and personality and like showmanship, which works out great. Yeah. See, this is why, you know, I tell people like there's always a, a, a flip side to every coin, like that every, um, you, you have to find the superpower to what may be seen as like a curse or something that holds you back. And if you can discover how it's your superpower. So like, you know, I never shut up. So I was like, oh, man, I'll make a couple podcasts. Well, because it's true about every single trait. We always talk about this, how every trait, good or bad, has a flip side. Totally. And can be your weakness or strength, depending. And... Apparently, he found his yeah. and was in the right place at the right time. It worked out. Um, I I really don't know a lot about professional wrestling, and it is such a strange thing because, right, everybody says it's fake, you know, that it's like yeah. this – it's sort of um, – It's theatrics. It's yeah. like stunt double work or like, in a way, a more violent form of Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Yeah. I mean, they're doing acrobatic stuff with a persona, like a story attached Mm. to it. That's why I say kind of like there's there's like a storyline. It's like opera and meets. Ooh, opera. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's decided ahead of time. Like the story is sort of here's what we're going to do. Yes. But then there are some parts. I told my friend Oliver, who's like an expert in that. He's a historian, a PhD, but he is also like really knowledgeable about wrestling, I said, I have a lot of questions for you because some of the injuries look real, like the blood and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm sure a lot of injuries are real Yeah, just because it's so physical. But also like sometimes the the storylines have personal elements and maybe it's like reality TV where like yeah. there's some Exaggerated elements. versions. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? What is your think sense- that. I think that, yeah. And in the same way, you know, when the, like, like a teen mom or Jersey Shore where like the characters that they are kind of bleed into the storyline and, and, and maybe the characters that they're playing. Yeah. I think a little bit of that. I thought the documentary did a good job in 
parsing out because his his um, name is actually Richard Fleer. Oh, F L E I H R, I think, and then he made it Rick Flair, which is very close to his yes. real name. Yeah. Um, but but his family and everybody sort of differentiates between those two people. Absolutely, because I can see that. Yeah, I think but if then, you can compartmentalize and you can divide those two and be those two different people, then you can find balance and success, and you can find um, I don't know, maybe more. There, in the same way, I feel like what really helped me survive being on reality television and all this stuff is that so many of my friends are friends I've had since elementary school. Like there's not a bunch of them. There's only a few, but they've, but they're like, she's not Sarah from this show. That's Sarah. In fact, I forget. I'm like, why are people looking at her? Why do people come up and talk to her? Oh, right. She's on that thing. And so they they could separate like the person that I was from the person that I'm kind of I mean, not necessarily performing because that is part of me, but it's only like a, a. Well, and on reality TV, it is edited. That is out of yes. control, out of your control. Yes. Um, and I like we joke on our lives on Patreon about how like whenever people don't like me on the show, I do not feel offended at all. Number one, because I'm I am annoying sometimes. Like. <laughs> Everybody, everybody in the world is yeah. like not great sometimes, right. and also that like I'm not for everyone. Right. Nobody is. Yeah, and if I were, I sure would be boring. Yeah. Have you ever like seen like a, a pair of jeans for everyone? <laughs> no, but I bet they're not cute. No, they don't. They don't make one, and anyone that you're thinking in your head is hideous. Well, so, right, because like, it would have cute, to like, have an elastic waist because it would change to accommodate. I don't want to be like that. Right, to accommodate. It's too, not, and it ends up falling apart. Like, not, like, really, you know, just, like, doesn't work. Because if there isn't a one-size-fits-all gene, you think there's going to be one-size-fits-all human? Yeah. Come so, on. and, like, sometimes on our lives, we will, you know, be critical of someone, and I will say... I have no, they're probably super nice in real life. I'm just talking about their character on this show. Yeah. yeah because yeah. it is totally different. God, I don't like, I wouldn't tolerate me on the show. I would be like, oh God, she's annoying. She, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I don't like anybody who's too pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're coming more, around on this. I need more Susie's in my life. I am enough <laughs> optimism for all of us. I can't, if I meet somebody else who's optimistic, I'm like, who's this Ray of Sunshine? Yeah. Stop it. Cut it out. And then I am that way though. So well, what's that and about? I, yeah. And it has good, good side and bad. Right. Like it's good to have, to be able to see the silver lining, yes. but not if it is delusional, which is usually a fine line. Right, right, right. right. But yeah, what I friend. sensed from the film though, is that he maybe, and his daughter said this, that he's lost Richard Fleer. That he's maybe um, because so much of his value came from this persona that he almost forgot his original yeah. position. When you get validated as one over the other to yeah. the point where that becomes like, yeah, yeah, you get lost in the character of it. Yeah. I think this happens to maybe actors who get like typecast as one thing or or – and they become lost in like that. You know what? A uh, uh, screech from Say by the Bye, Dustin oh, Diamond. Man. Yeah, right. Yeah, it can be a blessing and a curse. Yeah, it's your life's sort of greatest quote unquote accomplishment, yeah. but it's also this prison that you live in. Yeah. So it was totally fascinating. I yeah. obviously am not a person who is into wrestling, but it doesn't matter because this is just a fascinating human being. I think you guys would love it. And his story is bonkers. You will not believe it. Every time, every 10 minutes, you're like, what? That yeah, happened? that's interesting. Yeah, it was really fun. That's again on Peacock. So that was good. Um, okay. okay. I was mad about this. I'll tell you. Love I'm, it. Not, I'm not mad about something else though. And that's that our show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'm not oh, mad about that. Not mad about that at all. Never mad about people getting the mental help that they need. No, I'm never mad about that. Especially we were just talking it's so about hard this. hard to find out there. 
Yeah, we were talking about this on uh, our Patreon because we were saying John A. said that people are offered aftercare on the show now, which is Mm -hmm. great news if it's true and all that. But if you're not on the show (laughs) and you would like some therapy, perhaps BetterHelp would be a good fit for you because it allows you to get a therapist from the comfort of your own home or wherever you may be. Um, And you can pick from uh, licensed professionals who have all kinds of expertise. You can pick what is important to you and what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, Because life's hard. Yeah. That's an Mm -hmm. understatement. And we all need somebody to talk to. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, I mean, BetterHelp's a great option. Convenient, flexible, it's affordable. It's all online, just like everything else in our darn lives these days. You get a questionnaire and you get matched with um, a licensed therapist, you know, and you find one that's perfect for you. And you can switch to a different therapist anytime you want. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Brain Candy today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Brain Candy. So good. Okay, so... You know how we can, like I keep like being a boomer on this show, what? a little bit. Man. Like I keep saying like, why don't people want me to say you guys? And by the way, once I what? really thought, you know what? If trans people in particular are upset about it, I got to stop saying you guys because they have endured enough. This is see, this is why you're not a boomer because you always come around. And you like see, you just. Why well, like, always say? Yeah, I can yeah. be convinced. Yeah. Right, because I started thinking, like, my God, the stuff that trans people have to endure and the violence of it, yeah. literal and oh. figurative. I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to stop doing that. Here's what I'm still holding, like, what's the word? Dragging my feet on. Yeah. You know yeah. how when I'm being exclamatory and I'm like, I don't know what to do, man. I- I'm not giving oh. up man oh. yet. That's how I feel about dude. Well, because I that's, here's my that's argument. The same thing. They're both. They're both that. I'm not same. calling you man. Right. I'm just saying the word. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> yeah. You, you are a they or a she or whatever you want to be. I'm not talking to you. No. But you guys is talking to you, so I'm going to stop saying it. Okay. Whew. That is special. A good, that's a good. Yeah. I'm right. Okay. I'm gonna try. And. Like some of the brainiacs who wrote to me were like, here's why I think maybe you should. Oh. I was so touched by it because they were okay. very patient and lovely about it. Yes. I'm te- <sighs> Yeah. So I'll work on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but here's how I'm going to boom again. Uh, maybe you guys will convince me otherwise, but I don't know because I'm real oh. mad. Oh, that wasn't this a was... boom thing. Okay. It was... okay. Oh no, this is a new one. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. So this was in the New York Times. A lecturer at a university is a small private university. So not tenured. It's just a lecturer, which is usually a part-time position. Usually they don't get benefits. It is the underclass of professorial labor. Uh, This lady was teaching a class on art. And in the syllabus, she announced that they include artwork that depicts uh, religious figures, including the Prophet Muhammad and Buddha. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're not familiar with Islam, to oh. for, for many to depict Muhammad right. is is not allowed. It's right. it's seen as um, taboo. Yeah. It is a sacred thing. You don't do it. Right. The prof the 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 lecturer is, is not Muslim and is aware of these sensitivities. Mm-hmm. And so included it on the syllabus, which everyone gets on the first day of class, and is considered a contract yes, um, between absolutely. the professor and the student. Yes, correct. And then on the day that oh. that she was going to show the artwork, which is ancient, it's from like right. from BC or this something. This is educational. Crazy. I swear to God, if those kids tell me, go ahead. Uh, she warned everybody ahead of time and she said, today I'm going to be showing the artwork that depicts Prophet Muhammad. If you would like to leave, you are perfectly uh, permitted to do so. She showed the artwork. Um, a student complained and she was fired. 
I'm very mad about it. I, this is so, this is ridiculous. This is, okay. As a, I can only kind of compare this to, uh, this is not the same. I don't know how it feels for somebody who is Muslim. You gave all the warning. I feel like that is the most important part. Yeah. And if I were in a class, like in grad school, like for uh, sex therapy, and my professor, it, when they handed out the syllabus, said, this is what we're going to be talking about. And I was somebody who didn't, there was something in there that offended me or something in there. And I complained the day of when that happened. Come on. That's ridiculous. The university the yeah. Yeah. said yeah. that um, that respect for religion supersedes academic freedom, which, by the way, I wholeheartedly disagree with. What, how are religion. you supposed to teach about different religions without... What? That What? This is for educational... You need to see that. I think so. And I... How do you study the history of something without d- discussing or... And religion... Respect for religion. What does that mean? Right. Let's define that, number one, but it definitely doesn't supersede academic freedom. Right. I mean, right. you don't, uh, the idea you don't that not you teach are about, protected from yeah. um, being offended. Right. I don't know that tenant of like academic, right. whatever. Because they don't not teach about evolution because some people are offended by that I- idea. Right. This professor is not. Muslim. No. So right. why would she have to abide? No. By... This seems this seems it's not a rule for everybody. Furthermore, even if you were going to make like some sort of case for this, I think intention has yeah, should be considered. This it wasn't a mockery or anything. It's in the efforts to teach something and the all I I cannot imagine somebody giving more warning or somebody telling what did that, what did that student, and was, tell me about, who was that the student? student? It was a female who um, is not um, from America originally. I think she was from, I'm thinking it was Somalia, if I'm remembering uh-huh. correctly. And she said she feels like an outsider. She says that she already feels like on campus that she's, you know, marginalized. Yeah. Um, and she felt blindsided despite the warnings. How how can you feel blindsided by that though? Well, she declined uh, to be interviewed, and she declined to answer that question. <sighs> so I declined to feel sympathy because um, why I does everybody understand? Else? Yeah, I absolutely understand. Everybody's like if you feel that like that you have all the right to have those feelings and sure feelings feel offended yeah. by it 100%. But if somebody tells you we're going to be doing this and you enter into that agreement, which is exactly what a syllabus is that then you're fully informed in the same way. Like if I, I can't argue against something, anything that's in that syllabus. Cause like, this is clearly laid out. This is what, yeah. The I, class I, is optional. This isn't where you're forced to participate. Yeah. But, but this person believed it was Islamophobic. And if you are Muslim and you're listening and you want me to understand, yeah. I would love to hear from me because yeah, I feel Susie like changed I changed her mind on guys, so she is very open. It Listen, took a couple I have a PhD emails. She's in religious great. studies, She's open. and I'm still like, this is insane. Yeah, um, because but, come on. I don't think it's you should warnings. expect other people to follow your religious viewpoint. Right. That is, I understand why Muslims wouldn't depict Muhammad. That's right. against their religion. Right. And, and then were, they can yeah. leave the classroom if something is happening. But I also don't want to be a bigot. Right. So if if I'm missing something, you tell me. It makes it very difficult to teach and educate. Like, like if you say we're not allowed to. Well, and this is what I'm fearful of. 
Yeah. Religious That's, fundamentalism should not be determining the, the um, ac- yes. dialogue within an academic setting. I, I just can't believe again, it's this like person if, wanted her fired. It, yeah, that if you're teaching evolution in a biology class, you don't get fired for that because you offend the, the people who believe in creationism. Well, to, this is um, that's different because that is a public educational setting. This is a private university. So they are not funded by the government in any way, as far as I know. And so they can decide to fire that okay. lecturer legally. Yeah. yeah. I think they're wrong. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it's sort of like when you get banned from Twitter. Yeah, we have freedom of speech. You just can't do it on that, a, right? You yeah, can like say a whatever you want. Private company not at can this, say at this. Oh, then that makes me like not like that's very that's dangerous to have private colleges and like that. It really is like when you mix. Oh, it's a slippery slope. There, I see. I yeah, definitely but see that. Publicly funded universities are supposed to be. Like right. I'm describing, where right. like the, even the most disgusting speech is protected, yeah. which I'm all in favor of. Right. I want really gross points of view to be allowed. Yeah, so that we can challenge them. But this university, I I am fascinated. Though. I would love to know their the sort of inner workings of how they decided who was in the yeah. wrong and why. Yeah. That we don't have the answer to. That's interesting. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Yeah. All those details that you pointed out were important. That's a private universe. It's like those are all, yeah, what? The, but the, the the article comparisons, like this was one thing. Uh, it said, let me see if I have it. They compare this, like somebody being critical of the professor said, um, they compared showing images to teaching that Hitler was good. And that um, they comp- one person compared it to uh, using the N-word. I don't see that. Slurs are not the same as artwork. They aren't. And then I would also think if, if there, there are books that are still read that are of certain time periods that do use those words. Well, and, and context matters. Like I said, intention matters. Why did and someone use the word? about it. And, and yeah. But yeah. To, to fire her is what I'm really getting at. Like you right. could say, hey, next semester, we're not going to permit you to include right. that artwork. That's one thing. But to just fire her when she gave a warning? Yeah. I don't get that, man. I don't either. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, let me see how much time. Okay. Yeah, because I don't want anybody to feel like they're alone, but I just definitely don't think that that is. Uh, come on now. Yeah. God, I've had, I've had professors say things that are like. Ugh. Really? Yeah. Like about what? Gender, religion, race? You know, now that I now that I think about it, the ones that stand out are the ones that are on the other side, where it's the students in class who have said the things. Yeah, and, I've heard and, students say so. Yeah, and the prof- and Now that I'm thinking about it, it's more the professors afterwards who give me the big eyes and are like, "Can you believe what I just heard from that student?" I'm not saying it's not tricky to navigate all that, yeah. all yeah. those different opinions and provocative language and all of that. I'm, I know, but yeah, I I err on the side of in an academic setting, yeah, to let people say what they want, even when it's real gross, yeah, because that's how people learn and develop their own points of view. Speaking from experience, um, okay. Okay, well, we're open to learning new things about that. I feel like I still don't see how it's the equivalent to those things that they say it is. But if it's just like depicting the photo, but maybe I'm not aware and not educated on that. 
But basically, that's a personal, yeah. personal um, conviction, a feeling yeah. of like, I don't believe in this. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do it. Right. And you can leave the room if someone else does. Yeah. And there was a warning. Huh. I don't know. All right. Um, there's also a documentary on HBO called This Place Rules. It's about um, leading up to the insurrection at the Capitol. Oh, on yes. January I was 6th. wondering what that was about. Yeah. Yeah. It is wild, man. And it's, I oh. liked. I liked how um, it showed not just, like, far right Mm -hmm. points of view. It showed, like, the far left, you know, people that (laughs) are, like, you know, unhinged in a separate way. And I'm, like, disgusted by a lot of people on both sides. And it's just, really, it was, like, holy crap, people are not okay, which we always talk about. People are not okay. I mean, it was hard to accept that this is the public. This yeah. is the sort of general public. The way they scream mainly at each other is like, oh, I guess this is how people are feeling and behaving because of whatever rage or mm-hmm. fear or passion or whatever. And they're just like screaming past each other. You know, like there was like this far right guy in the beginning of the film who was like playing bongos and like, I don't know, saying something about Donald Trump or something. And then there was like this far left lady who was like on a megaphone being super annoying, like, you're a cultural appropriator because you're playing bongos. Those are um, for Native America. And I was like, oh, God, I don't know who I hate more in this story. I just genuinely don't. Yeah, Um, everybody's just screaming at each other. And nobody's hearing each other. It's not doing any good. I always say, like, I say the same thing relationships are relationships whether they're and emotions are emotions and i say this when i do couples therapy that no peace treaty was ever signed on the battlefield Hmm. and you cannot be in the middle of fighting and also working on the peace you can't it has that's interesting yeah i don't even know if that's true but i think it's true because probably (laughs) well the concept is true that like you can't sign a peace treaty on a battlefield while you're out you know with swords drawn okay So, like, in your just sort of off-the-cuff opinion of something like this, where, like, people are really upset. People of of Mm -hmm. all political stripes are are upset about a lot of things. And they want things to be different. Yes. And then you see what it results in, which is just, like, yelling and protesting and some a lot of times violence. Yeah. And just kind of, like, insanity. Like... What do you think sort of is the the answer? Because I do think when you talk to people one-on-one, it is totally different. I love oh, talking to totally. conservatives. Yeah. I find it's it so interesting. Thing. Yeah. It's like the group I really syndrome. Do, yeah. I think it is the that, that this is the result of, I don't know, uh, it's like the who's shaking the jar thing. Like the jar Absolutely. shakers benefiting from this and it's whether it's like oh i was just watching something the other day that was uh i think it was like the dark side of the 90s like one of those kind of documentaries and it was talking about um what happened when stocks became something that individuals like themselves like regular people could trade and how there didn't used to be a news network that was like and right now like like you know announcing all of like the tickers going down this is trading at this and and make you all sound excited like that kind of of that was invented this yeah like the frenetic energy yeah to yeah make other people money like this is all rooted in like capitalism and people at the top getting paid by like I hate now. I almost sound like a conspiracy theorist myself when I say this. But well, it no, really, you're just saying that if you invent this is capitalism 101, like about shopping. Yeah. If you create like the Beanie Babies, yes. if you create a sense of urgency, yeah. Then of course people are going to want to be a part of that and, and get the thing that the, 
everyone wants. Yes. That's just human nature. And this is all, and there, there's something about, you know, everything. It all like ties together. It all works together. You know, the news is paid for by, those are TV shows that are paid for by advertisers and advertisers make, uh, sell more things when people are like feeling strong emotions. So it's, it's beneficial for the television shows to, to do something that elicits strong emotions. The last thing they want is a emotions. rational consumer. Yeah. Right. No, that's not what anybody wants. Oh, well, no, nobody wants a rational consumer. So they nobody do things that, that make you if you're, make you irrational. And this is the result. You, when you make people feel afraid, even with like the, the, oh, you need this security system in your home, fear these people outside, that they're outsiders we have to fear. That plays into the language of like, oh, people are coming into our country. Like, but how do you reconcile? Cause you're looking at it from the left point of view. So you're thinking what they're afraid of immigrants, they're afraid of um, the vaccine, whatever. But like from my mom's point of view, yeah. she thinks that I, and she's right, am afraid of COVID, right? Yeah. So she yeah. said, stop walking in fear. And yeah. I said, I think that's a fair point, but you're afraid of the vaccine. Right. I'm afraid of COVID. Totally. What is the difference really? Nothing. Right? It's still fear. And so fear what do we do like about, induced. how do you discern what to be afraid of? Ooh. That is a tricky question. That is... And who to trust. That's a really good question. So, you know, what, it kind of makes me think of the book that we read for book club, The Measure, which it, about how oh, yeah. people... So the, everybody in the world wakes up one morning and there's a string that you get uh, at the... Uh, if you're over the age of 22, that is the length of your life. And some people decide to look in the box. Some people don't. It's a whole story about that. And what you find in, in, or, you know, what, what, uh, I kind of took away from that book is that it didn't matter if you knew, like not a lot changes when you know how much time you have left, but if that fear of like, I don't know. Like the fear just really is the thing that I think drives uh, a, so a lot of So once people knew like they what, didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. Once people knew that they didn't have time, you kind of like look at like what's really important in life, what's really valuable, what really matters. And I think like you say, how do we, how do we know what things, what fear is real? I mean... Can you ever really can can you can't know what is going? We have to like kind of surrender in a way, like, and that doesn't nec- surrendering doesn't mean like, like, I don't know, flipping over and just saying I'm not going to do anything. It just is like accepting what is, and then I don't know, focusing on things that you can control and yeah, not the things that you can't. Yeah, yeah. Prioritize what's within my control. Okay. So you, and in, in our own, and this is the other thing that's so important. Everybody's reality is real to them. COVID is the scariest thing to that person. And uh, vaccines is the scariest thing. You know how we were saying in the last episode, which pair, which high, which is better, high uh, tops or low tops? And the studies showed whichever you believe is better for you. In a way, this is a bigger version of that. This is like, so you have to do, how do I know what's real? What, what, what to fear? Well, the things that you're fearful of. And then in a way, like focus instead on what you aren't fearful of. Mm-hmm. To kind of change, switch the focus. I think mm-hmm. that is what has happened. Is instead, our focus has gone so much as a as a, a population, as a, as a people, to 
all of the stuff that we're scared of that we're not recognizing. This is like the and, and people benefit from us being scared. This is the how many stories about the flights going down do we see versus all the flights that successfully make it. We're focused on the scary stuff. And it's the Mr. Rogers thing. Look for the helpers. Look for, you know. Yeah, perspective. Yeah. And and <clears throat> that's a good question. To, I don't, who knows? Well, well we just I, like I things have, are scary, but. I have a lot of are. compassion for people. Even, well, as you know, I talk to murderers every week on the telephone. I have a lot of compassion for people, even who do things that are despicable because life is real confusing and we haven't been given all the information no matter who you are on this planet earth or how wise you are how educated you are how rich you are you don't know what happens when you die Mm -mm. nobody knows for sure and that causes people to have psychic like um uh anxiety Mm -hmm. existential anxiety and what people do with that varies some people meditate. Some people right. focus on like caring for others. Some people go to war or murder right. people because who cares, you know? So like I really do have compassion for the human condition because this is kind of a real bum deal we all got. Mm-hmm. And like when I see these people that are behaving in a way that I don't agree with, whether it's at the insurrection or whatever, I'm not mm-hmm. always that mad because I just think, right. you know what? I understand why they're mad. Absolutely. Life is super it, it's weird. A, it's the human condition we're seeing played out. And this is what happens when a lot of people are really scared and stressed and panicked and don't have the answer. And it's that, uh, uh anticipatory grief. Yeah. You know, this, and th- life <sighs> kind of sucks. It's hard. There are, <laughs> there are, the things that are the real meaning, the things that is that really matter, have been put on the back burner for things that maybe don't. That you know, just in society, money, mm. fame, success, whatever. We're like defining it in a different way. What it means to really be have like a a quite like a good life you're totally right though that it is the bees in the jar being shaken yes. by yes. some outside actor because yes. that is a hundred percent the case yes people benefit and, from us being afraid right people make a lot of money off of us being fearful yep and like let's say you do want to protest something And then you get arrested for it and and your life is ruined by it. Mm -hmm. The person shaking the jar does not care. They don't care at all. Like you're on your own. So like be real careful about who you're, whose job you're doing, like whose work you're playing out because they don't care. Right. Whoever that may be. Mm -hmm. But it made me sad because people are messed up. You got to see it though. It is... (sighs) The first 10 minutes, you're like, what am I watching? I will definitely watch it. It's like if Jerry Springer it's important. were on methamphetamines and had zero dollars. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? That kind of yeah. thing where it's just like yeah. nothing to lose. Yes. Well, that's a lot of the attitude. Yes. It's that nothing to lose. It's really... Oh, yeah. It's, and like I said, you have the lefties, you have the righties. Then you have these people that are just there like with their signs about like circumcision or something insane. Right. And you're just like, oh, okay. Like everyone just wants to be heard even if they have yeah. cuckoo crazy things right. to say. Right. Well, yeah. Oh, God. It's bonky. Bonky. Interesting. Anyway. Well, I can't wait to watch that. That's going to be a good one. That's on HBO. You guys should watch it. This Ugh. Place Rules. That's what it's called. Yeah. Um, I heard the filmmaker on NPR and he was, he's a real young guy. He's real cute. And I like, he's in over his head for sure. But, (laughs) but, (laughs) but he did it. I always thought to myself, I'll really know that I'm like 
an a, a senior gal, like an older lady, when I start referring to younger guys as, oh, he's real cute. Oh, he's a real yeah. cute. Like, and they're For like, real. oh, bless your heart. Yeah. Like when pie. I'm like, in my mind, like not in, uh, yeah. Like, oh, oh, he's real, oh, he's a real honey. sweet guy. He's a real cute. Like, he's adorable. I'm like, oh God, I'm, we are that age. We are that. Well, we are. I am for sure. Yeah. You're getting there. Yeah. I can't wait till I you're 40. So I'm going to have a party. Embrace it. For the ages. You remember how like the last time I did a shot was at your 30th? Yes. We're doing it again at the 40. Yeah. Woo! Every like um, milestone birthday of yours, not mine. Yeah. This is great. Ooh, I'm, I'm having deja vu right now, which probably means we're going to get <gasps> fucked up. That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> I told um, Lucas that, well, I, I mean, I didn't tell him, but I told Eli that I wanted to tell Lucas this, that for my birthday, I want an IV. You know, he's a firefighter and they give like IVs to people. I mean, I don't yeah. know if like they actually, they, I would have to like call the ambulance, I'm sure. Oh, but, one like, of those ones where they give you Yeah, you know how good it feels when you get saline and you go to the hospital and you're so hydrated and your skin's great the next but day because you you've had so work? much water? Yes, I know like- they work because every single time I've ever had one, it's the best there's those places you go to, like you know those IV bars. I really should. Just yeah, I know about them. Yeah, but I thought. They oh were my like god, I love it. Baloney. No, not baloney. Facts. <laughs> Facts. My skin is always. I've never been to one of the IV bars, but I have been in enough sketchy situations to need multiple <laughs> bags of Staline and to have IVs before. And you feel great after those things. Nothing's I better. Remember when I was on the spring break challenge? And I fell faint. Like it was so hot. Yeah, and they yeah. gave us like no food, of course. Oh my God. And they had to give me an IV. I was just sitting there. I wasn't even doing anything, right? And I heard like a guy speaking in Spanish about me. And I all I heard was bulimico. Like he thought I was bulimic or like had an oh. eating disorder. I was like, no, man, I'm just hungry. Like they didn't feed us. Yeah. It's just, I'm just <laughs> on a challenge. Yeah. This is how it goes. Yeah. But it's like disordered. Oh my and God. so he thinks I'm choosing it. Anyway, okay, so oh. let's wind it down. Um, we were wrong about the poo story, but frankly, I hope someone does win the lottery and does that. Yeah. You know. We were wrong about the facts, but right about talking the sentiment. about it. Because yeah. <laughs> we all know that there's nothing funnier than poo stories or the number 69. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And... Uh, <laughs> um. Ric Flair, whoa, whoa! Just as a spoiler alert, he was once struck by lightning, and it wasn't even a big part of his life story. What? That (laughs) that goes against my theory about people can only have one crazy thing. He's like the the exception that makes the rule. Yep, yeah. Because even the interviewer was like, "You're the only person I could ask this to, and it's not an important part of your life story." But tell me about the time you were struck. Oh my god. I was like, Adam, because I, I had asked him originally, like, do you want to watch this with me? He was like, you can just tell me about it. And I was like, paused it. I was like, so far. And I like <laughs> named all this stuff. And I was like, this is awesome. So oh thanks to Gretchen God. who suggested it, my sister. That's great. Um, I'm not into this Prophet Muhammad artwork thing. So oh, guys- yeah. We had a long discussion on that. Yes, help me understand if I'm wrong because I don't yeah. want to be a bigot, but I also don't want to be supporting something insane. Right. We need the facts, people. Are anyway, you with us? What do you feel? Are you with us or are you against us? Yeah. Anyway, I love you guys. Accept it. I love you so much. <laughs> that was like a song. I love you so much. I'll love you even more if you, you leave a five star review. What do you say? Do it, you weirdos. Oh, we love you. Weirdos is collected. It's like it's all of us. Yeah, and it's not gendered, so we'll go for it. All right, bye, weirdos. (laughs) Bye.